Hello again, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Retro Tech. Today's repair is all about color purity and convergence. However, this repair is kind of a dangerous one if you don't know what you're doing. So sit back, enjoy this video, but please remember that you shouldn't try this unless you're highly experienced with these type of machines and you're willing to take the risk of uh, basically hurting yourself if something happens or damaging your equipment if you make a mistake. Today's CRT is the Sony KV consumer CRT that I RGB modded. So let's go now inside and check out the CRT. Here is the Sony KV 27 V26. It's inside and I'll be working on it inside today rather than moving it out to the shop. I do have this TV set up with a lot of retro gaming consoles as well as a Roku device to stream old video and anything that is analog I like to use on this television. It was manufactured in 1996 and I have previously recapped the internal boards and also RGB modded this television. I also recalibrated this TV many times using the service menu. However, once I got it inside and had it set for a while, I noticed a problem started to develop down in the lower corners of the picture and along the edges of the picture screen. The problems are related to the magnetism around the CRT tube itself. And once I switch over to a red screen, you'll be able to see better what the problem is on the picture display. If you look closely down in the right hand corner of the screen on the television, you'll notice that we have some purple coloring going on here. Now this is a very bad purity problem due to our magnetism not being right. It also affects our convergence and uh, our geometry is not straight either on this corner. This is really pronounced on the other inputs like composite which I'm using right now and S-Video. For some reason on RGB it doesn't show up as bad. And you can also see I've got some weird lines going on here for purity. So again to do this repair I'm going to be doing it inside my house and I'm just moving the TV out of the way and of course to do this I'm going to need to open up the back shell of this CRT. Now one of the reasons we have such an issue with purity on this is it's a very large screen so there's a lot of factors that can maybe change our and affect our magnetism inside our CRT. Another thing is since it's a consumer CRT it's only encased in plastic so there's not as much shielding around the tube and the components inside to protect it from outside magnetism. Now look, you gotta be very careful with doing this kind of stuff. I only know where I need to be putting my hands so that's why I'm doing this and this adjustment pretty much has to be done while this thing's running. See I've loosened up my yoke and I'm going to tilt it so you can see the effects on the other camera, what happens to the screen. So this needs to be set in the right position as uniform and like parallel hovering above this glass as possible. And if it's bending towards one particular direction it can affect both the purity of the picture as well as convergence in the corners which I think is causing my big trouble over here. So this is, there's no big trick to this, I'm just going to have to work with this yoke and attempt to make this look as good as possible. If you take a look back here, here's some convergence strips and you will have to move these around too in your corners to make sure that you can correct your magnetism. So the remainder of these adjustments are going to have to be made by hand and I will switch back and forth between looking at the screen and then looking at what I'm doing with my hand. And basically what I'm doing is I'm adjusting two things right now. I'm adjusting the yoke a little bit and then I'm adjusting the convergence strips. I'm trying to get the yoke set to where there isn't going to be screen tilt, but I also need the yoke tilted a specific direction to eliminate as much of that color bleed around the edges of the picture as I can. And then I can try to tighten things up with convergence strips. Unfortunately, this is a very tedious task and you really have to pay attention to what you're doing so you don't make a mistake and either damage something or get yourself hurt. Here's a quick look at the yoke again. Now this yoke assembly controls the entire magnetism around the neck of the CRT tube. 
which means that this is what's giving us a magnetic field in order to control the geometry and the picture quality on the screen display that we're actually viewing. After your yoke is set, it's important to tighten up the yoke ring with the one screw, sometimes it has two screws, to make sure that the yoke doesn't move again once you move the television back into place. So our screen has almost been fully calibrated now. I've gone through the submenu and cleared up a lot of the problems on the screen. While making a yoke adjustment, you'll notice that when you tilt it up and down, it controls the left and right sides of the screen. And then if you tilt the actual yoke itself, left and right, it can control the tops and bottoms of the screen. So that's what you have to do is slowly tilt that up and down and left and right until you clear up those corners. Some monitors, however, won't have much trouble with this. If you have something that's a higher end monitor like this Sony PVM 2950Q, it has a much more complex and powerful yoke assembly. You also generally will not have this problem on smaller screens such as 14 inches, so you don't have to worry about the color purity as much as a larger screen. That's where the trouble comes in, is the larger display area and the weaker yoke assembly. All right, now that our screen looks wonderful, let's fire up the old Sega Genesis and test out some gameplay. Stay down, you! Alright, well, after that epic battle, let's talk about this screen purity issue again. This is caused by the magnetism on your CRT monitor or television set. And the only way to fully correct purity is to balance out that magnetism. You can do it like I did with a couple of strips that are convergence strips and you can also do this through a couple of purity magnets and also by adjusting the yoke itself unfortunately there's not an exact method besides what I did of just slowly taking your time and making these adjustments and then seeing what happens on the display screen as you make an adjustment there's not an exact number or measurement that you can put in like you do on the service menu you have to do all of this by hand so it's important to take your time and really focus on what you're doing while you try to make an adjustment like this sometimes you may even have to go back and reset what you've been doing and start all over again with adjusting the yoke and the convergence strips Unfortunately, with this CRT, I don't feel like I'll ever be able to get the co corners perfectly sharp like I can on a PVM or BVM or really any other high-end Sony video monitor. Even with its flaws in the corners, the center of the screen looks fantastic and really is a great option if you cannot find or afford a Sony BVM or Sony PVM or if you're looking for some kind of display that's over 20 inches large as larger professional video monitors are really rare and hard to get a hold of. Just remember that with all CRTs occasionally you will have to compromise something when it comes to screen quality. 
You can't have everything perfect when it comes to analog signals and certain types of analog television technologies. To finish out this video, I want to do a huge shout out and thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel. We've helped RetroTech pass 2,000 subscribers early in 2019, and I'm really energized to keep bringing great content about old technologies and CRTs. Thanks again for all the support. Please consider checking out the Patreon page. Please let me know what you think by dropping a comment below, and also throw me a like if you liked the content. And have a wonderful day.